In this video, we're going to talk about engine mount retention. That means holding the engine inside the rocket kit securely so that the engine can't either slide forward or slide backwards. Uh, because if the uh, engine were to slide forward, it would push the parachute out prematurely. And if it slides backwards, um, according to Newton's, uh, Newton's laws of motion, for every action you have a reaction. So if this comes out this way, the rocket's going to go that way without pushing the parachute out. Um, so we want to make sure that the engine stays in its place. On some rocket kits, like this one here, the engine hook is kind of loose and it's really easy f uh, for the engine. It might pop out. Um, for this, what I like to do is to take some thin tape. If you don't have thin tape, you can just go and get some masking tape and cutting it into strips. Uh, but I'll just take a piece of, piece of tape and just wrap it around the engine hook and go around the outside of the motor like that. And what this does is it prevents that engine hook from being able to pop upwards so that the engine would kick out. So that, um, you can pretty much do this on pretty much every rocket kit that has an engine hook. And, and it's always a good thing and it's never a bad thing. So that's uh, my first recommendation there. Um, we get a lot of calls from customers um, here that have rocket kits that use the Estes E engine, and then they want to decide, uh, and then they decide they want to fly with a D engine. Uh, but when they put it in, it, it goes way too far forward. Um, so what they need is a spacer, and they always say, "Well, where am I going to get this spacer?" Well. If you've flown a D engine before, you probably have an empty case, and you can make a spacer out of that case. Just take it and just cut off, and it's exactly one inch. So you just measure one inch, take your saw blade, and just cut one inch. You get your spacer, you put your spacer in first, and then you slide your rocket engine in, and it holds it in place, and there you go. When we get to 29 millimeter diameter kits, um, you'll find very few rockets have engine hooks. And it's because of this problem where the engine wants to kick out. Um, so again, always wrap tape around the hook, especially on the 29 millimeter motors. Uh, the Aerotech kits are the only ones that I know that have the engine hooks in them. Um, and they were designed for the um, RMS 2940 to 120 casing, so that when you slide the the casing in, it will hook over the end of the uh, nozzle end. Um, but when you're using other engines in it, like single-use motors, um, here's an F engine that would fly nicely on this kit. This one doesn't have, since it's shorter, it's going to slide too far in. Let me see like that. So what we need to do is to um, put a thrust ring in there. Um, Aerotech gives you these little rings uh, that typically you glue on the back end of the engine like this so that when it goes into a rocket it butts up against it like that. And what you'll typically do on most kits is uh, that don't have engine hooks. You just take your masking tape and you'll just wrap tape around the outside like this. Now many people are afraid of this wrapping tape around the outside, but actually this works really good. Um, that engine is not going anywhere, either forward or back. Um, so this is typically how we do 29 millimeter motors. But on the Aerotech kit, uh, because it would go too far in, you got to move that ring further forward on the nozzle end. Um, See this one here, I put it probably about an inch forward so that when it slides in, that hook will latch over the side. And then I would wrap tape around that engine hook so that it won't pop out at ejection. Okay, uh, one of the reasons why we don't put um, engine blocks in these is because of the different lengths of the motors. And then let me explain with this one here. So now this was an F engine. Now to say I decided I wanted to fly with a G engine. Now the G engine is a lot longer than an F engine. 
See, here's, a, here's an F engine, and here's the G engine. Now, if I put that G engine, and this one does have an engine block in it, what happens is now the engine doesn't go in all the way, and you're basically stuck. You can't really do anything in this situation. Um, you don't want to let the engine hang out this far because it throws the center of gravity too far backwards, and it could make the rocket unstable. So typically um, what I tell people is, you have to design the rocket to take the longest engine possible. And I recommend that you just leave the engine block out altogether. See these new engines and the, the reloads are the same way. They have the engine block built on the back end of the rocket. And if it doesn't have an engine block on it, just take some tape and you can build one up. Or you can take the ring that Aerotech gives you to build one up. And just keep wrapping it around until you get a nice thickness there and it'll take probably about seven or eight wraps of tape to build up enough thickness so that when you slide it in then you can wrap tape around it so that the thickness of the tape equals the thickness of the tube so that when it goes in it butts up against there that means it can't go further forward. One of the newer things in uh, rocketry is, is called engine retainers and these are a two-piece aluminum um, assembly where one end is glued onto the rocket like that. And then when you slide your rocket engine in, it will butt up against that, like this. And then to keep it from going backwards, now this, this, this part here is glued on, and you're going to use epoxy. Um, and then this other part is just um, screwed on, and, that, and that's what keeps it from sliding backwards. Now these are pretty nice and they really make the rocket look um, like it was designed and built like by a professional. So I, I do recommend these. Uh, they are a bit more expensive, but uh, it gives your rocket that nice finished look that you might not otherwise get. Now finally, if you have a rocket, let me see, take this one here. Now this rocket was built according to the kit instructions. And the, the instruction said, put the ring, this aft centering ring, on the back end of the rocket and then glue the engine mount up to it. Now when you do that, the engine block will prevent it from going forward, but now I don't have anything I can wrap tape around to hold it from going backwards. And there's really not enough room here to glue this engine mount retainer, this, this part that gets glued on. Uh, so on this, in this situation, we're basically stuck. The only thing that we can do is to do a friction fit. And I don't really like friction fitting, and this is the method of last resort. Uh, but if, you're, if you are going to do friction fitting, uh, put the tape towards the nozzle end so, uh, so that it's easier to get the rocket in and out. Um, because if you put the tape so far in, then you're going to be really pushing hard to get it in. So, but if you put it right here closer to the nozzle, then it makes it easier to slide it in and out. So that is engine retention um, for a variety of different rocket kits and um, different engine sizes. Uh, my name is Tim Van Milligan, and this is the Apogee Construction Workshop, the Apogee Rocket Workshop. And may your, um, may your, uh, well, anyway, we'll see you next time. <laughs> Hi, I'm Max Xline from Pueblo, Colorado, and I've bought from Apogee for quite a few years now. And I'm especially impressed by the quality of Dynastar kits. They really put together well and they fly great.